right, Josh. Here we go. Um, all sorts of little doodads. Yes. Not that one. All right, next. Happy little trees. Bingo! Ah. Bingo! Yes! Today oh. we're talking about the six sins of Revelation. Ah, so no! Good. Get down! The sin is so bad. Get down! Get to the Messiah's chopper! Get out of here! No, save yourself! It's so bad! Why do we have. Oh. Are you the sermonator, Josh? I am the sermonator. Okay, I Obviously. get it. Obviously. You know, I've been waiting to talk about this, but yeah, it's like ripping off a band aid. No one wants to talk Nobody about it. No one wants to talk about that. No, we want to talk about things mm. like how you can worship God better in skinny jeans. Well, let's jump straight into it. You know, okay. God just dive into the deep end. Revelation chapter 9, okay? We live in the deep end. We just had the sixth trumpet that was blown, and four wicked Benai Elohim that are bound at the river Euphrates are let loose. They gather a 200 million man army from the east, and they're on some kind of demon hybrid horseback. They travel across the entire breadth of Asia, killing everyone in their path till they reach the Valley of Armageddon, and one third of the population of man dies. You know, if Amazon would yeah. make this as a show, they wouldn't have to make up all the other dumb stuff they do. Love you, Amazon. <laughs> Revelation 9, 20 through 21 says, but the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons and idols, gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent on their murders of their sorceries, of their sexual immorality, or of their thefts. So those were six sins we just heard listed. Six of them. There, there's six of them. And we're going to jump into the purpose of all these six sins, but I would just like to give a little setup for this. This is one of those key moments in the book of Revelation where we get the exact day timing that this event is going to take place. Okay. So, so I, I like timing. Yeah. Uh, I'm interested a little bit. So in Revelation 9.15, we understand that, you know, if you take the seven-year tribulation, that's 2520, 2,520 days. Okay. So then you subtract a year, a month, a day, and an hour, and you get to day 2128. Yes. This is the day that the sixth trumpet is blown and that these guys are released. And this is a time period in the tribulation where everybody at this point has heard the witness of the two prophets. They've heard the 144,000 evangelists going around preaching about Yeshua. Angels have flown through the atmosphere. Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So these, these people, they know the truth. Now, They've heard the truth, but they still choose not to repent. <laughs> to be clear for anybody who might repost only three seconds of this, you're not saying this takes place in the year 2128, correct? No, 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 no. Okay. It takes place on the 2,128th day? That's what right. Saying? Okay. Yes. Anyways, 2,128. You're right, Josh. So let's jump into the six sins, if you will, because I believe that you can compare those sins to sins that are being committed today. In our church, in our world, yeah. and, and even in the uh, Ten Commandments, you can find these same sins listed. Now be careful of this, because when I read the first, the first six sins, the only six sins here, uh, I was like, oh, obviously... I'm not going to do that. So turn off your uh, pride that says, I would never fall for that okay. because you got to wait and hear the descriptors. Uh, sin number one, the worship of demons. Okay. I'm guessing you probably never thought you worshiped a demon before. Exodus yeah. 20, 30, you shall have no other gods before me. So interesting, Josh, if you all have been following us back at the beginning of 2022, we started a five-part prophecy series that talked about Satan's origins of his plans for the end of times. For prophecy, we began with the Mount of Congregation, Eden in the high places, and we talked about on this original Mount of Congregation, there are these fiery angels known as Benai Elohim, the sons of God. And they were literally called gods by the Most High. It says so in Psalm 82, 6. I said, you are gods. All of you are sons of the Most High. Uh, it's telling that El Elyon, who is the Most High God, he sits upon the highest throne. We call these other uh, angels gods. But then he says, you shall have no other gods before me. You don't worship these guys. These guys fell. They rebelled against their creator, went down to earth, mated with the daughters of men, and created this hybrid race of Nephilim of giants who were then destroyed with the flood. They're disembodied spirits, have no place of habitation. They can't go to heaven, can't go to hell. So they're going around, living vicariously through people, possessing people, and, and trying to get them to entice them to sin. And in Greek, the term for these are daemonion, minions of demons. They are the evil spirits Yeshua casts out of people in the book of Reve in, in the, uh, the New Testament, you know, if you will. So one thing I've 
pretty yeah. much overlooked until this moment is what I like to call the Bad Dad Award. Um, notice it says it came down and they hooked up with the Daughters of Men. What were the dads doing? Which one of you dumb dads said, yes, please, take my, my daughter, Benai Elohim. I would like yeah. for you all to mate. That's but, a terrible idea. But the point is, like Josh said, well, how are we worshiping demons? Yeah, how, how does this apply to us? Well, there is a demon behind every sin. There you go. A demon behind lust, a demon behind murder, a demon behind theft, and all these different things. These spirits like to take on those identities and entice you to commit those sins, those crimes in their stead. So people may say, you know, I'm not worshiping any demons. Uh, but when you fall into those sins, you're turning away from your creator and you're falling into that demon worship, actually. And you are literally serving that sin. When you sin, yes. you are serving that demon because he is behind that sin. But even worse today, Josh, we have people that are deliberately following after other gods. You know, you have false religions like Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, uh, you have Gnosticism, the worship of science. Even people who say they have no religion, they're atheists, but their, their religion is that there's no God, right. you know? And so you have all these different things that people could be worshiping as gods. It may not think like environmentalism is a God, but it's a God to some people. They're worshiping Mother Earth, they're worshiping Gaia, they're worshiping the creation rather than the creator. So it's happening more often than you think. Number two, idolatry. They did not repent of the worship of the works of their hands, Exodus 24 through five. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. So interesting, idolatry. Josh and I have talked about this many yes. times before, uh, that anything that draws your attention away from God that gives more focus than God himself in your life Boom, is an idol. It's an idol in your life. So yeah, in Revelation, they're bowing to these golden images of, of the image of the beast, you know, and all that. But we do that every day in simple things, you know, things that are idols in our life. They could be food, they could be sex, they could be entertainment. Uh, even good things like working out and exercising and, and working at your job can become an idol to you if it pulls away your focus from God. And here's an uncomfortable one we don't like to talk yeah. about. Uh, even your church building um, can become an idol. Your church, oh, that's true. Uh, your pastor. We see a lot of times yeah. that we, in uh, modern churches today, put a heavy focus on adorning our facilities with the most modern, the most um, uh, Advanced attractive yeah, things that we can do to draw in. people in. And that's sure. the excuse. But yet, when all of your time and commitment and money and efforts are going into the building, yes. Even though you're saying they're for drawing all men unto God, the focus <laughs> is on that giant shiny object that we're waving in front of everybody, not God. That's right, because the church is not the church. We are of a church. It's just a building. It really doesn't matter in the long run. But we love your building. It's cute. We're not yeah. mad at you. So number three. Num number three is murder. And no killing, as in war, is not murder, nor is killing in self-defense. We're not talking about the fact that somebody tried to stab you and you stabbed back. Yeah. All right, so... <laughs> that, that's true, okay. Don't think we're pacifists. Uh -huh. So that comes from Exodus 20, 13. It's a really long verse. I want you all guys to buckle down. We're yeah. going to roll it in Hebrew and Aramaic at the same time. <laughs> you shall not murder. Oh, look. Okay, obviously there's a lot of murder going on in the tribulation. Yeah. During the first three and a half years of the tribulation, the beast is massacring anybody that believes in Yeshua Jesus. Yeah. They're just killing the, the saints. They're known as the saints, Gentiles left and right. The Jews are untouched for the first three and a half years uh, because he made that peace treaty with them. Well, after the abomination and the breaking of that peace treaty, then the last three and a half years, he's murdering all the Jews. So there's murdering going on left and right. He obviously has included his forces. It's not just him who can murder. He needs, you know, military and officials and civil servants to help him along with murdering. So that's going on. But, you know, even today, Josh, you may, may not be, you know, murdering someone. You know it's bad to murder. You're going to go to jail. But even with things like abortion we've seen in times past, we know that's kind of in a flux right now. Uh, we've been murdering babies since 1973. 62 million as a matter of fact. That's right. Which is the rough number right now. It's sad, but Yeshua, Jesus had a quite different standard on murder than what we are talking about. Matthew 5, 21 through 22 says, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council, but whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Mm. First John 3.15 says, whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. 
so we're all pretty much murderers. <laughs> there you go, guys. Again, I mean, for literally. the pride bus who wants to say you never sinned, yep. uh, Yeshua made it clear. If, you, if these things abide in your heart, that's right. even as much as animosity, you, you're doing the same thing in his eyes. That's right. uh, number four uh, on our Ooh, six terrible sins of badness, Ooh. sorcery. Wow. Some translations say witchcraft and magic arts. And you may say, this isn't one of the Ten Commandments, but throughout the Levitical law, if you read it, it's very clear that witches, witchcraft, necromancers, uh, sorcery, wizards, all these people are to be put to death. Those were bad. There, there, there's a regulation. Don't do the black arts, don't follow the enemy, or the punishment will go. And you may say, well, I'm not doing all this. You know, I'm not committing all this. I'm not really, you know, trying magic or anything, but... But are you? First, <laughs> first Samuel 15, 23, for all of you uh, sorcery-free individuals. Yeah. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as idolatry and teraphim. So are you rebelling against your parents, against God? Any sort of rebellion is functioning under the spirit of witchcraft. And all the stubborn people in the audience <laughs> said, I am not! But even more so than that, guys, the word sorcery that was used in this context in Greek is pharmakia. Old pharmakia. And we've spoken about pharmakia before last year. It's got you some know. bad stuff with it. It is, and it's, it's using um, drugs, medicines, mind-altering substances to literally open the spiritual gateway for the enemy to come and torment you while you're at your weakest moment where you can't defend yourselves in your mind. But even worse now uh, than attacking the minds of adults and individuals is that the focus has shifted onto children. Oh, that's true. And literally the occult, um, magic and all these things has been introduced to our children at such a young age. It's in their books, it's in their movies, their television shows, their video games. Um, every part of their life and their social media, they are identifying with these Eastern, you know, religious influences and they're acting out things with magic. You know, I, my daughter wants to be a magic princess and, and dress up and pretend to be that way. Guys, we, you may not think magic is real, but we've seen it. We've seen the manifestation of evil before. It's nothing to joke about. Uh, Satan has some form of power that he uses to deceive people. Yes, the power of God is stronger but we still must avoid the appearance of evil and not let our children act out and participate and try to live it out like some role-playing game. Just, just, just avoid it. It's no big deal. Yeah. Uh, just don't play with demon stuff. That's, <laughs> that's the rule I have, no demon stuff. All right, number five, big one. Oh, yeah. Shame associated with it pretty much hits everybody in some form or fashion. Yeah. Sexual immorality. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. Yes. Uh, Exodus 2014 says, you shall not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. See, uh, Man, that was going on a lot in Bible yeah. times, but I think we we were worse than it was in Bible times. We're worse because today, in anything that we use to promote or market, we use yes. sexuality. That's true. Um, today, in everything that we try to support with the yes. quote unquote individual or your rights or your freedoms, are based on your sexual preferences and choices. Yes. Everything has actually been diverted to the focus on sexuality, mm -hmm. whether it's in you know your choice to be this way or who you are or whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, we've taken the focus off of just what the individual is, and we've moved on to this sexually heightened focus um, deal. And that's that's how we're all drawn into things nowadays. Yeah. So it's more of just, you know, committing adultery, you know, you have, you have uh, gender role reversals and, and you're teaching this stuff to your kids at a young age. I mean, you have children in, in, in pre-K and in kindergarten, all this stuff that is being taught from a, a education, from our secular education in public schools, that there are all these different identities. You can have two mommies, two daddies. You can have these polynormous couples. You can have, it's all a choice for you to make. There's no one way for it to be right. And this is a perversion of God's sexual plan uh, for man. But even with all that, Yeshua had a different plan of what he considered to be uh, sexual immorality or adultery. Matthew 5, 28 says, But I say to you, whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Again, that's easy. The trap of the enemy. All you good Christians out there, all you good <laughs> Jewish people, everyone who's so good, uh, may not actually physically commit one of these sins. You may not ever physically yes. have an affair with somebody. Yeah. You may not ever physically get involved in sexual immorality. But Yeshua said, if you've done it in your heart, if you've imagined it, if yes. you've focused on it, lusted after it, um, then you are committing sexual immorality. Mm -hmm. And again, to go back to today's society that is um, heightened so much of this sexual lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, for instance, with women, to promote yeah. the strength of women, we promote the strength of women by using their sexuality as their tool to be strong. It's that's no right. longer something that a man gets to control. I get to use it how I want to and whatnot, but that's not what makes you powerful. That's is right. your ability to take your clothes off when you want to. Yes. You know, you, uh, your, your power comes from who God made you to be and, right. his spirit, and God's spirit living inside of you. 
So that leads us to number six, theft. <clears throat> the final uh, Ten Commandment, Exodus <laughs> 2015, you that's, shall not steal. That's pretty self-explanatory, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't steal. I'll go to the store and five finger discount. No, okay. <laughs> well, what about what about wasting time in your job? Yeah. What about when you are um, paid to do something yeah. for a specific time or a task or whatnot, and instead of doing that mm -hmm. and fulfilling that, you do the minimum to try to um, get, get the money and get yeah. by without having to do the task that you were supposed to be responsible for? Well, I, yeah, I know the last two years there was a lot of people who were working at home, and I'm sure their standard of work ethic dropped more of them if they were being watched at work by their employers. You know, they could, you know, take a little rest, take a view put on Netflix or whatever. And yeah, that's that. That's really stealing your company's time. And we see, uh, it's very interesting. My daughter started working this summer, you know. I was talking to all these employers out there. And there, as you know, you go to any point of the workforce and there's a, a shortage of workers. Everywhere there's a shortage of workers because for two years, people weren't working and now, they don't want to work again. They don't want to go back into the workforce. I really liked sitting at home doing whatever I wanted to. And so they're enticing them with $12 an hour, $14 an hour, you know, minimum wage to get in there. And these people have been telling me when these workers get in there, they do the bare minimum there. They don't care about their job. They try to get themselves fired so then they can get unemployment. That's stealing. You know, it honestly is. What about the government stealing from you? Is that legal? Taxes? Taxes? <laughs> I would call it stealing. I mean, yeah, you know, Yeshua said, you know, Given to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, you know, there is taxes there, but it's gone to such a point of extreme, taxing the dead, taxing your estate you're trying to give to people. Um, and then they turn around and they give that money uh, through welfare. Now, I'm all for, you know, people who can't help themselves and we're supposed to help them and bless them. Yeshua said give to the poor, but people are looking to government as their source. And if the church was doing its job, and giving to the poor, we wouldn't have these deceptive programs from the government giving out welfare, people cheating and lying to get those free funds, and then giving uh, the person who gave those free funds a vote just so that they can keep them happy. Well, surely theft never happens in the church, though. <laughs> it never happens. Though. Oh, no, no, no. Tithing. Well, oh, well, yeah. I, I'm sure you've all heard pastors that say, if you don't tithe, you're stealing from God. But I like to tell you the opposite of that. Uh, you've heard us talk before about uh, tithes and offerings. The system of tithing was Old Testament. What do I mean by that? It was part of the law that was completed by Yeshua. And there is no way you today can complete the process of tithing. You have to give not just 10%, 20 to 30%, depending on the year. You have to sacrifice animals. You have to do things that we obviously cannot do today. It was an obligation. But when Yeshua came, he fulfilled all the criteria that he says, now it's time to give from your heart not knowing what your right hand is giving with your left hand. And when you do that, then it is a choice. It is a choice that you're doing by the Holy Spirit. It is not an obligation, but pastors still, they demand, give the tithe, give the tithe, and they turn around and put into a building or buy a Lamborghini or something like that. And I think that's stealing from God. I honestly do. I feel like Lamborghinis get a lot of bad reps. They're always get, <laughs> they get used in bad faith analogies and in tithing. We love you, Lamborghini guys. Um, again, instead of getting mad at any of these, instead of saying, I've never six sinned before, um, <laughs> six we sins. know you have. The, um, <laughs> the point is saying um, you can fix it all today by repenting. That's All easy. you have to do is yes. ask Yeshua for his help. Yeah. Um, don't don't get caught up in the, don't tell me what to do. We're not here to offend you, although I'm sure y'all are at times. <laughs> We're here to remind you that in everything you do, in word and deed and prayer and meditation of your heart, mm -hmm. let it be unto God. Let it be the right way. Humble yourselves. Ask That's him right. for help. Repent for your sins. Get on the path to doing what is right so that you That's are not right. in bondage to sin. Right. We know that it's super easy to fall into sin, but it's even harder to get out when you've been in there for a long time. Right. Sin is like a quicksand. It's going to suck you down. Yeah. One step by one step. The more you wiggle, the, the deeper you go. And so God wants you to have freedom in that. That's Isaiah right. 55, 7 says, let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. And you heard it first from the Sermonator. The Sermonator. He will let no sin go unpunished. <laughs> yeah, I'm so, so glad that um, God is not Arnold Schwarzenegger. I love you, Arnold. But man, with big biceps like that and such an Austrian accent, I would always be afraid. It'd be hard to be held in his wonderful arms. Well, thank you for joining us, guys. Come and see us next time. It's okay, Arnold. I, God loves you. There's still a chance.